Hey everybody, Christian here, and in this video I want to show you my new cloud provider Sivo that I just recently started using for some of my Kubernetes deployments. Because when you want to run a Kubernetes cluster on the internet, you just need a great cloud provider that offers you all the features you need that is easy to manage and hopefully for a good pricing. And I've already tested and tried out some of their features like their Kubernetes clusters, some computing engines and also their Terraform provider. So let's walk through what Sivo has to offer. And just to let you know, Sivo sponsors this video, but as always, you'll get my own and honest opinion on that. So let's start and let's have a look at some of the cool features. First of all, I want to show you the official homepage sivo.com where you can read more about the features and services, and of course, also create a free account. Sivo is a cloud native service provider, highly focusing on Kubernetes deployments, and I believe they are around since 2019, and they recently announced their global availability in October this year. And they promise you blazing fast cluster launch times in under 90 seconds, simplified developer experience, and also a transparent pricing from just $4 a month, which sounds very impressive. And it's very easy and simple to start launching a Kubernetes cluster on Sivo. We are doing that later, by the way. But first of all, I want to talk a little bit about their features because one thing that really stands out here is how fast they are. They give you a production ready Kubernetes cluster in seconds and this is because they are optimizing K3S which is running on their servers under the hood and that is a very lightweight version of Kubernetes and highly optimized. It's not always 90 seconds to be honest so sometimes it takes a little bit longer but not really much and it's still extremely extremely fast. Of course, they are also certified for Kubernetes and you can run clusters there, but also computing engines. So for example, if you need an additional Linux server with Ubuntu, Debian or CentOS, you can also use some of their computing engines and they are also working on managed databases, which will come soon. So this is also very nice. Of course, you can also create an account and use their free credits to just test and try out Sivo without any payment at all. So that's very nice to just see if Sivo works for you as a provider. By the way, when we are talking about pricing, let's also compare Sivo to other cloud providers, especially when you want to run a Kubernetes cluster. So you could just use any of those bigger cloud providers like Microsoft Azure, Amazon's AWS or Google's cloud and run a Kubernetes cluster there as well. But you can also see that they are much more pricier than Sivo. Of course, they also offer additional features there. But if you just need a Kubernetes cluster and you're fine with all the features Sivo has so far, it's probably the better option for you. Additionally, to their very solid service offering, they also have some great resources here. For example, for developers, they offer a CLI tool where you can manage your Sivo resources programmatically in a terminal. So just download the tool, authenticate, and then you can create new resources or manage existing ones. Of course, they also have a REST API and also providers for Terraform and Pulumi. So by the way, I just made a video about infrastructure as code and Terraform and used Sivo as a cloud provider to just programmatically deploy a computing instance there. So if you want to watch this tutorial, I've put your link to that video in the description down below. Check it out. It's pretty nice. Let me also walk you through the dashboard because when you created an account and logged in, you can use that to manage and create new resources. And first of all, I would select your preferred region here. So they have United States, the United Kingdom, and just recently added a new data center location, Germany, and they already announced some other regions as well. So when you selected your region, you can manage all the different resources in that specific location. So for example, you can manage Kubernetes clusters here. We're doing that later and also computing engines. So for example, if you want to create a Linux server, you can just launch a new instance, give it a host name, how many servers you need select your sizing here and also which image you want to use to provision that server, for example, an Ubuntu, CentOS or Debian server. You can also set up an initial user and import your SSH key. But one thing that is very important to me is managing firewalls because then you can limit the access to your server within your cloud provider, which is really important if you, for example, want to limit the access to your Kubernetes API and you might just add your public IP address there. So you can also manage other resources here like networks and firewalls, or you could also manage DNS entries. So this is something to be honest, I'm not doing with Sivo because there are other services for doing this. But in case you would want to manage DNS records with Sivo, you could also add your domain and manage them here as well. One thing I haven't gotten into are webhooks. So this is something I might do in the future, which sounds pretty interesting here. But one thing that is really, really cool here is the Sivo Academy that they just recently added. So there you can watch their videos and tutorials and they created a lot of different videos. I think over 50 videos are 
in that uh, academy here and they are also sorted by skill level. So you can start with some of the beginner courses to learn about Kubernetes, what it is, about the general concepts here and also the resources and objects and then step up the game to more intermediate and more pro courses about storage volumes or configuration and security. So that's very nice. It also tracks your progress and this is something that I often use to just learn more about it and learn how to use it. And let me also walk you through the creation process of a Kubernetes cluster so you can get easily started with that. So just click on create a new cluster here and give it a name like testing for example and then select how many instances you need. So for a high available setup you need at least two instances here and you can also put this on a separate network and select a firewall. So as I said this is something that I would always do and try to limit the access to your Kubernetes API just to add more security to it and then select an appropriate sizing for your machines. For example you can start with an extra small appliance but they don't recommend it for a production setup so just use that for testing purposes. For a production setup you might use one of the medium or large instances that will give you much more performance here. And then you can also add applications that should be automatically deployed from their marketplace. So this is something that is great for testing but I personally I like to deploy my applications myself because only then I have the full control and I know what I'm doing there. So for testing you can definitely use that. It's great you can also find the marketplace and manifest files on their github page to just see what they're doing when you deploy this stuff. But I also will make more tutorials about deploying applications on Kubernetes clusters. So there is something coming in the future. <laughs> Okay, so now let's create a cluster and see how fast it will deploy. Because I said they probably don't always fit within 90 seconds, so they also raise the build time remaining here up to 120 seconds. But they are usually faster than that, so let's see how fast it will deploy today. Okay, so now it took under 90 seconds, which is pretty nice. And once the cluster has finished deploying, you can also download the cube config file to start managing your cluster. And you can also see the public external IP address and the API endpoint, how to manage the cluster with any external tools. And you also get a DNS name from Sivo that you can use to manage this cluster. If you're managing multiple Kubernetes clusters, you need to put all these entries of the configuration file manually in your cube CTL config. I've showed you that in my Kubernetes tutorial so I won't go into too much detail here. I've also added an alias k for the kubectl command so I don't need to enter this all the time when I'm managing Kubernetes clusters. This is really helping you. So you can just put an alias into your zshrc file. I've also updated my dot file repository if you want to take a look. And currently I'm managing the CL creative staging cluster so my zsh extension will show me that. So I need to switch the context to our testing cluster to be able to manage it. So let's enter kubectl config get context to see which different clusters we are managing. And when you added those entries in your kubectl config you should see all these different clusters that you can manage. And let's just switch to the testing cluster by entering kconfig use testing. And now I'm managing my testing cluster. So let's try to get all the nodes that are currently up and running. And there you can see we have our two nodes that we've just deployed on Sivo. And of course you can now start managing any resources here. For example, let's get all resources in all namespaces to just get an overview of what was deployed on our cluster and then you can start using this and deploy your applications. I also want to show you the CLI tool so if you want to download this just go to the Sivo homepage here and just go to community developers and then learn more about the CLI tool. That will take you to the GitHub page where you can just get instructions how to download and authenticate to Sivo via the CLI command. And then you can also use the command Sivo here to see and manage your resources. You can also create new resources here. For example, let's enter Sivo Kubernetes list to list out all Kubernetes clusters that I've just deployed. But this is really nice to automate or simplify the deployment of resources through a terminal command. So I would just recommend you get familiar with that. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied with my new cloud provider Sivo, especially when I'm working on Kubernetes. The experience is just excellent. So why not just give it a go and try it out? You can start setting up a Kubernetes cluster by using their free credits. So I've put your link to their website website and offerings in the description. And if you want to learn more about Kubernetes, cloud computing, infrastructure automation, then check out my videos about that. You will find that in the description as well. And as always, thanks everybody for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.